I'm with uh, Peter Cairns and you did one of the, the talks today and um, I was quite interested in your talk because it's quite different from some of the other speakers that we've had. Now the other speakers have been talking about banning um, shooting on grass moors, they've also been talking about regulation. Now, your, your talk was on a different track completely I thought. So first of all tell us who you are and what you do and then a little bit about your theory on how we can maybe combat pers raptor persecution. Okay, well I'm Peter Cairns, I'm a, a nature photographer, conservation photographer, have been for 17 years and I guess why I'm here is that I, I did a book uh, with a colleague of mine, Mark Hamlin, about 10 years ago now called Tooth and Claw which explored people's relationship, people's often fickle relationship with, with predators. So that kind of gave us a little bit of an insight into the predator issue but what was driving the predator issue, the characters in it and what motivated them to think what they thought, yeah. say what they said, do what they do. Um, so yeah, we were coming at it from a, almost like a sort of social science angle really. Yeah, yeah. And what, and what did you come up with? What was your theory? Well, I, I don't know that you could call it a theory as such, but I think the issues that, yeah. that surround um, grouse shooting and the banning of grouse shooting and the debate that goes on over raptor persecution is, is not unique to those particular species. It, 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 it applies across many rural conflicts. So if you look at fox hunting, for example, that's not necessarily about the fox as such. It's yeah. about different social groups, different belief systems, north versus south, rich versus poor, um, pro-nature versus sort of utilitarian of nature, you know, people that want to utilize nature. So there's a whole range of, of um, sort of socioeconomic and cultural undercurrents that are fueling the, these divides. Um, and, and it's no different with the Harrier situation, I believe. Some psychologists would say that banning or, reg or increased regulation is not going to work and that another sort of approach is needed, possibly a campaign to make persecuting raptors just unacceptable within the community of gamekeepers and land managers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, banning is a is a is a blunt tool. It's it's a very easily under, understandable concept. It's black and white. It's yes or no. And I understand the 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 urgent desire to protect hen harriers, stop them being killed. So I, I get all that. But in the longer term, there has got to be, in my mind, a, a much more a, a cannier um, approach that 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 understands, takes into account why people do what they do. What is it that's driving them? There's a whole range of socio-economic and cultural drivers behind raptor persecution and a whole range of other rural issues. So um, shaping people's belief systems and, and, and gradually making, as you allude to, making raptor persecution not just unacceptable to conservationists but unacceptable to wider society. And that's yeah. the, probably the trick we're missing yeah. at the moment. Um, just, just on a bit of a wider thing, I think what we don't know at the moment is where we want to get to. We want, we want Han, Han Harris to stop being killed, but beyond that, what, what do we want our moorlands to look like? You know, what, what's the end game? And then if we establish the end game, we can perhaps then plot a route to, to get there. I think we've got to be a little bit more imaginative. I think, um, you know, we've got, to, we've got to get to the root of, of what drives, what motivates people to do what they do and, and address that head on and, and, and at the moment we're not doing it, we're treating it with a big blunt stick and I think we, we perhaps need to combine the stick, there's a place for a stick but we need to combine it with a, a, a carrot, we need to offer an alternative and, it, and it's change that's the enemy and we need to turn change from a threat into more of an opportunity.